welcome to my channel. My name is Nikki. Thank you for stopping by. Today I'm going to be doing a flip and drag. And I wanted to do it with all the same brand paint, but I come up one color short. So I had to use um, a different brand for that color. But um, to go over my color palette, I'm going to be using the Fine Touch Acrylic. This is the majority of the paint. This is in titanium white. And then I have primary yellow. Grass green. Primary cayenne. Cayenne? C-Y-A-N? Cayenne? Deep violet. Uh, Napoleon. Napoleon Carmine. It's red, y'all. And then, um, I didn't have an orange in the fine touch. They make one. I just haven't purchased it. So I used the Artist Loft orange. So, as you can tell, these are primary and secondary colors. Um, and I just thought, um, why not? Basically, I have not painted in a week and a half almost um i went on vacation and i had some school projects that were due and so i've been out of my art studio for a little while and um decided this would be a good a good um color scheme to start off with so I'm gonna do flip and drag this is a 10 by 20 canvas and I'm going to put three cups here and two cups here so five cups and this is how I lay my cups out um I stagger them like this because it um, is better whenever you are um, trying to cover the most space all right i also put um like three drops of the cell magic in the green purple and orange so in my secondary colors i put cell magic all righty have i got all the preliminaries out of the way these paints are mixed pretty much two to one um so they're not super thin, but they're not um, well, this is about the thickest a, a paint would be in a paint pour. Because kind of the point of calling it a paint pour is so that your paint is pourable, right? Flows. Some people call this um, flow, flow, flow art. I don't know. I don't know all these things. I just know that I like to paint. And I like to paint in this way. So this is how I paint. Let's see. What can I tell you guys? Um, just got back from Tennessee. We went to, um, Pigeon Forge in Gatlinburg and we went and saw um, Dolly Parton's Dixie Stampede and it's um, <clears throat> it's like Christmas season so all the shows and stuff were Christmas themed um, it was really cool if you've if you've never saw that show it's um, a lot um a lot of it's done like horses and 
We really like this show. Mm, I think my least favorite part was they have a, um, they have one, um, lady who is like the fire, um, they make the horses jump through rings of fire. And I just kind of felt bad for the horses because we were sitting near the end where the fire pops up and um, it was really, really hot. And I just thought, those poor horses, there's no way they like that. Um, they did good though. They jumped through the fire and I assume that's what they were supposed to do. Nobody got hurt. Um... I just didn't, didn't care for that. They had this one, this one little part of it that was um, like the toys come alive and they play um, the Nutcracker, like the Sugar Plum Fairy song. Um, I like that part. And then they had like the guy that was kind of like the comedic relief his name was Skeeter and he would come in and out and he was looking for reindeer and um he was so funny the guy that plays that part he's hilarious um anyway it was fun if you um want something that's like family friendly it's family friendly so we went to Dixie Stampede and then we went to Dollywood um we went to Dollywood last year around the same time it was so cold last year it was miserable um and it was kind of like raining the whole time but um this time it was beautiful weather. It was it was cold enough that you needed a jacket, but it wasn't like unbearable. So we did that, which if you've ever been to Dollywood, you know that is an all day thing. Like it's it's they have, last year they didn't have, they were working on, I think it's called the Willow, Willow Grove. It's like fairies and stuff like that. And they have a butterfly tree. It's like this huge tree. And it's got, um, they're not real butterflies, they're artificial butterflies. And the butterflies light up. That was my favorite part. The butterfly tree was so pretty. It's toward the back of the park, though. So, by the time you get there, you're, like, worn out. <laughs> you just kind of want to sit down. And then, what did we do the next day? Ah, we went to downtown Gatlinburg and just walked the, the streets. Um, I don't know. It was all right, but I wouldn't want to. I wouldn't want to do that part again because after a while, it all it seems like they're all selling the same thing in those little shops. Anyway. All right, so I've got my colors layered. I got my cups flipped down. I did not fill them all the way to the top. You guys should be proud of me. Um, I'm still probably going to have more paint than I need on this canvas. And that's okay. Oh, look at that cup. Am I, have I got you at the right... That's really pretty. Let's 
turning around. I know this is not looking nice right there, but it's going to go off the edge anyway. Alright. So, I'm going to stretch and then I'm going to torch because I can already see a good many cells and I don't want them to get overstretched. So... I don't think I've done a pour that was like primary and secondary colors before. So I just thought I'm going to turn this around. I just thought this would be fun to do. See what we can make. Um, the thing with flipping drugs is that your paint consistency is one of the, like I mentioned, is one of the thickest, um, paint consistencies when it comes to paint pouring. Usually a two to one ratio is as thick as you, as you. This is thick as it's going to be when it comes to, um, like, Liquitex or Artist Loft or those kind of paints. If you're using, um, if you're using craft paints, one half, um, to one, but those paints are already thinned. But, um, yeah, usually two to one is about as thick as you want it in. Um, when you work with thicker paint, you have to be mindful of how much paint you leave on the canvas. Um, because if you leave too much, it's going to crack. So, that is something to keep in mind. And I know some of you <laughs> kind of went, ah! when I said I was using silicone. I don't use silicone and any other technique pretty much except for flipping drags. Because, to be honest, it's a pain in the behind to clean off before you do a varnish. And I just don't like it. But I do like it in flipping drags. Sometimes, you, if you get your pour medium right, you don't even need silicone to make sills. Um, let's see how I got... Here, these cells are looking a little overstretched. It's that's one of the hazards of silicone. That's why I wait to torch because I don't want them all to be overstretched.
that went pretty quick so you know what i've got enough paint let's move this one i'll come back and show you close-ups let's set that guy to the side and this is a nine by twelve i had done a um pour on it and i scraped it because i didn't like the way it looked so let's do something else um this paint in this jar it has already been thinned so i'm not losing my little mind it's thinned <laughs> this is a four ounce cup and let's just do a dirty cup with the leftover paint no I don't think all of it's going to go in here so let's just put a little bit of each all of the yellow did And if you notice, I layered these colors in a way that they wouldn't make mud. I layered the um, secondary colors between the two primary colors that create that color. All right. Let's put some more on here. All right. And let's put down a puddle of white. I'm not going to put it all the way down. Let's just put a little white down like that. Because there's enough paint in this cup. Let's just do... Let's just do a good old-fashioned flip cup, shall we? Why not? I haven't done one of those in a while. Because this can be a two-for-one. Come out, come out. I used to spray silicone on my um cups to help the paint come out uh, I'll stop doing that look at all the pretty colors all right let's move it around that's pretty I hope you guys can see. This was a bit impromptu. It's always this last corner that's like, whoa. You having to coax it along. Come on, Nellie. You can do it. Once it gets there, though, it's fine. I'm actually going to have to. Mm. There's still a. Try to get my little um cells that's in the red kind of back in shape. They were getting a little wonky. I 
I hope you guys can see this. I don't have any little guidelines for you. I know a lot of times we pour to the corners. There is no rules that says you have to pour to the corners. You can pour to anything. You can pour off any side you want to. In fact, there's really no rules when it comes to paint pouring. Except, have fun. There's probably some really good guidelines, though. <laughs> All right, let's pour it. You guys look at that we got a two for one a little flip cup to match my flip and drag i think this looks great it's kind of i think it's glossy i've got yellow and green and blue so i've got those and then the blue into the purple and red red got a little bit mm, mm, a little bit lost but then it comes into the orange. So we we got all the colors in there, which is really, really great. Because that's really what I was aiming for was to be sure that I got all these um all the colors onto the canvas, which I did. So I'm happy. So anyway, okay. I'm going to sort out this mess and then um I'll bring you back and show you some close-ups, okay? Okay, you guys, so I'm gonna give you some close-ups. Um, yeah, this turned out pretty cool. Some of my cells got a little overstretched, but um, nothing that's too bad. And then here's our second little one. I really, really like this one. And you can see all the colors are there. And they just kind of like go in, go in order this way. So anyway, there are my two pieces. I'm very happy with them. And I think I'm going to mix up some more paint and do some more paintings. So if I do that, you'll know because I'll post a video. <laughs> Anyway, all right. I hope you guys have a good morning, day, night, evening, wherever you are, and I'll speak to you all very soon. Bye.